So this is our first test of our track system. And you kind of go down the rail. I've never laid pipe this long before. I firmly believe if you're gonna try, fail quickly and move on. Like a glove. We could shoot ourselves right out of the tunnel. That's gonna be. Don, what's the word of the day? Miasma. Miasma? Or if I get enough speed, I'll just shoot out the end. This isn't a good idea. Welcome back to the underground spider hole. Well, we're above ground right now, but we're gonna do a little bit of a tour of the spider hole. It has rained a significant amount in the last couple of days, and I wanna see just how well it fared. I got Don here, my trusty sidekick. You haven't even, you haven't seen the thing finished, and he hasn't even watched the video. He didn't watch the overnight, that's okay. So we're gonna give him a, a first-hand tour, so I'll give you guys a little bit of recap as well. We'll see how it weathered the storm. We probably got couple inches of rain and kind of see a little bit of evidence at the at the opening of the hole there's a little bit uh, of the water kind of seeping down the entrance hole you kind of see here there's a little bit of erosion the water's kind of uh, like it's leaking down a little bit down below you can see a little bit more erosion there there we might have to sure up the entrance to the hole down the hole we go as far as I can tell it looks like it's pretty dry we've got a little bit of condensation forming on the TV because it is 96% humid in here you can see a little bit more water running down here that's at the base i think there is water that looks like some sort of erosion when it was raining i kind of thought to myself it's probably a good idea to have a secondary exit so my secondary exit is going to go here did you take a look at my hole i did it's quite deep if we look inside there there's no actual water that's come up so when i originally dug it i had a little bit of water we had a little bit of groundwater but Again, that's a nice place for water to go is to seep into the ground. So we're not going to, uh, we're not going to really worry about that. There was a, there was a comment on, on the channel that this thing is going to fill with water during, I guess, during the fall in the, in the winter season. What do you, what are your thoughts on that? I, I don't, I don't believe it will, but it's yet to be seen, right? It is like a sump hole, but I was thinking like a water hole, like it would be really cool to actually have a water hole. You could drive a sand point down there or something. Anyways, let's get, uh, we got a little far ahead of ourselves. Let's start digging. We're going to be digging with a little bit of a little backhoe on the end of the tractor because you guys all know we've done enough digging by hand. We're going to go from the top side and then dig down and set our pipe in for our great escape. Hi Bean, did you want to go back in the hole? What do you think? I'll make you a little doggy door. What do you think Bean? Make you a doggy door or you can just come down the tunnel. Yeah. All right, first things first, we're going to start moving out our pine needles because we want to be able to rake our pine needles back once we're done excavating our hole to make it secretive. Now, I was doing some thinking about solutions for having water infiltration down into the hole. What I could do is I have those old tarps. I could actually cover the entire area with a tarp to prevent any kind of precipitation from finding its way down the hole. Maybe hey, what do you think of that idea? Yeah? Okay, good. It's so much easier to dig with a backhoe. An excavator would be even better. You'd probably go twice as fast as this thing. Backhoes are uh, multi-purpose, not good at everything, but adequate at most things. Hey Don, you feel like hand digging this thing? No. No, I'm good. We're doing uh, doing well, so. We've got down to depth where I want my pipe to come out of my uh, my bunker. Now I just got to go back around 20 feet with my hole. We ended up using the backhoe bucket on the tractor in order to dig our trench because as you guys know digging in any kind of dirt is a real pain. Now we just have to kind of feather out the opening here because I want to make it look natural kind of like uh, you know the end of a, of a culvert or a ditch area so I'm going to just take a little bit of more of the uh, material out here and kind of even it out so it's a gentle kind of gray that you can just kind of shoot out of the hole. It's my longest pipe yet. So the plan is to get this pipe in the hole in the trench we just excavated. But first I have to make a template in order to cut my hole in the bunker. And then we're going to slide this pipe. This pipe is nearly 20 feet long. We just got to get it in there. Okay, can you stop that and get rid of the camera? What, what can go wrong with this plan, Don? I to break the plane. 
I've never laid pipe this long before. I firmly believe if you're going to try, fail quickly and move on. What do you think is plan B? Is that a good plan? Can you guys see that? There's like bees everywhere. That one's got a full load. I don't know if it's heavier than it looks. You know what happened there? You got a little bit of stuff in the pipe there. A little bit. It's going to be rather difficult to get it out. Don, what's the word of the day? Miasma. Miasma? Yeah. We got to get them to look that up. That's right. All right. Miasma. It's, it's... In, the, in the hole, it would be a, a miasma. You could use that in a sentence? Um, I did, didn't I? I don't know. You could use it look, as... You can... The people out there can look up miasma. <laughs> there, in a <laughs> <That's> sentence. <laughs> using it in a sentence. That's right, yeah. The air is miasma. Well, that's kind of a sentence. Is that is that... Is that how um, would you use it? Well, anybody that's ever used a chainsaw knows that sound of hitting a nail or a screw. It worked really well until I hit a number of screws and then it went <laughs> It's kind of like getting an electric shock through your system. So I'm gonna have to switch to a sawzall to get the rest of that cut through. But uh, I got most of the hole cut. I've got the place fumigated now. It's kind of like miasma coming out of that, that hole. You got blue smoke so we've got a definitely a cross breeze which is definitely a plus we don't got to really worry about ventilation anymore we got a, a very strong wind through that hole and i'm sure once we have the culvert hooked up it's going to increase that ventilation which is uh quite quite good maybe the humidity will drop currently it's about 96 percent sometimes you just gotta pull out the sawzall i got some uh metal bi metal blades from princess auto that should do the trick i'll cut through the nails cut through the screws that are holding it in place and then get my nice opening into my bunker. I feel like Fred Penner. It's good. Well, I sure did make a mess. I figured I would take the opportunity to do a little bit of housekeeping because it's a lot easier to throw the dirt out that hole than it is to get back up that hole behind you. So I'm just gonna shovel all this stuff up, which is my sort of my it's sort of like play sand. It'll actually be good bedding for the pipe. We don't have any proper pipe bedding, but this stuff will work. That gets it out of here. It'd be easier if you cleaned your room like this. Just cut a hole in the wall and shovel everything outside. I think I'm onto something. Look, it's, it's dawn at the end of the tunnel. Why won't it focus? You can make it through there, Don? Uh, I could. Sing us a, a tune. To. Sing us a tune. No. <laughs> Figaro. Be really hard on the knees. Well, that's why we gotta make our sled. It's gotta go up. You gotta go up? Yeah. What if you go in the hole and use the bar to push up? Like, pry it underneath? What if, we, what if we use a yellow bar? Is it down there? No. <laughs> okay. Can I push? Push.
like a glove. Super pleased with how well that fit in the hole. I wasn't sure it was gonna go in. We had to tickle it a little bit with the Sawzall, but at the end of the day, it fit nearly perfect. Really happy with that seam. I'm gonna put a couple more two by fours on the sides to bridge where we actually cut out. So it gives us a little bit more stability. And then once I've got most of the backfield done, I'm actually going to sink a tarp at the top and that's going to prevent water from kind of dripping down into my into my joint it'll kind of it'll deflect it to drain beside it and then into the ground and then drain away into the gravel layer and none will be the wiser we just got to backfill this hole now and uh we're well on our way to be shooting at the end of this guy with our cart. This video is sponsored by EcoFlow Delta 2. EcoFlow Delta 2 is one of the fastest charging batteries on the market today. It goes from zero to 80% in less than an hour, crazy fast. You can expand the system from one kilowatt to three kilowatts. So right now I have the EcoFlow Delta 2 combined with a secondary power pack and that brings us up to a two kilowatt system. Now you can scale your system according to your needs. And what's great about it It'll power 90% of your home appliances. The entire underground bunker is currently powered by these two battery packs. You could power it with one, but two will last a really long time. You can use it outdoors, on the go, in your home, power all of the things you need. It can handle up to 1800 watts of usage. And if you use the X-Boost technology, you can go up to 2200 watts and with the scalable power packs, you can ensure that you have enough power to run your high drain devices for even longer. They use the same technology as the Tesla battery pack. You can charge this thing up to 3,000 times. That's like using it once a day for 10 years. It has two 100 watt high drain USB ports. It also has USB A ports, which allows you to charge your uh, legacy devices. And it's got AC outlets. It's got a powerful inverter so you're never without power wherever you go. There are three ways to charge your EcoFlow. You can hook it up to your household power with AC, charge it in less than an hour up to 80%. Or you can use your DC car outlet or your van or your camper. And if you guys don't live underground, you can charge it with the optional solar panel. Just checking out the online app, you can actually see what the percentage of the batteries left, the battery temperature, because that's important, especially if you're charging with solar, to monitor the temperature, but it also says it's available time. So the, under the current load, I can operate this configuration for nine hours and 36 minutes continuously with this particular setup. Using the smart control, you can control the Delta II from your smartphone. Using the Bluetooth or Wi-Fi connection, you can monitor your electricity usage on the fly. If you guys are looking to pick up your very own EcoFlow Delta 2, visit the link in the description below to visit EcoFlow's green energy solutions on their website. I'm not exactly sure what we're going to do with the opening, but we will uh, deal with that at a later date. This is ridiculous. Ah. Started off cutting the end of that culvert with a grinder and determined that uh, it was a really, really terrible idea because hot sparks were shooting on my arm and burning me all over. So I switched to the old Sawzall and that seemed to work a little bit better, although it's an awkward situation to deal with in the first place. And then once I had the culvert completely cut off, I was able to use a little mini sledgehammer and bend the lip over ever so slightly to marry itself up to the wood to give myself a nice glorious hole. How's that for a nice tight fit? I'm super pleased with how that married itself up to the wood. Now I have a really nice 
hole, exit hole to get out of. I can, here you go. Hey, cool. Hello. Hello in there. You guys can, you guys can see how, how big that hole is. That's the light at the end of the tunnel. That's actually really cool. My plan is to put a, uh, another circle as a kind of a door here in order to close it up. And the other thing I like about this thing is that when you're kind of sitting over here, you can't see the end of the hole, which I think it's like, it's, it's something to do with feng shui. Like I think, it, I don't think you should be at the end of the tunnel, like constantly. Like if you're looking here, it's okay. But if you're, if you're sitting there in bed and looking down the end of a tunnel, I don't know. I think that would just creep me out because you'd always be like, what's at the end of that tunnel? Anyways, we're gonna go top side. It's still a little ripe in here from using the grinder down here and the sawzall and the dust and whatnot. So I'm gonna let that clear out and uh, we're gonna do top side work. I'm gonna camouflage the end of the tunnel to make it a little bit more natural. Well, you gotta get further in. Oh, okay. What do you think? Pretty cool, but I'm gonna go further. Can we go further? So, so I cut in the tunnel with Bean, is that better? You like that too? Yeah. You can go out pee now. Oh. Yeah. Hi! Hi! We go. Good girl. Me first. All right, you go. Go back. Okay, come on, me. Come on. Good girl. Yeah. It's pretty cool, but a bit dusty. It's a little dusty. Okay. I need to get down. Yeah. We're putting a the ladder there. We need a ladder. We need a ladder and a rail. What do you think of a rail system where you can just kind of shoot down the rail? Just uh. Can you get me down from here? Yeah. Okay, put, okay, how about we stand on that and get this? Okay. Hang on. Hang on what? All right, now that we've got our pipe in and we've got it kind of camouflaged here, I kind of want an easier way to get down the pipe as opposed to just crawling through it. Now, to give you guys an example, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take you guys along with me to crawl into the bunker. The bunker has been, it's been sitting a couple of days. There's no, I don't have the door on the other side of it. So uh, there may be some animals in there. I, I hope not. Maybe an angry raccoon or an angry skunk, or I do have a plan for a door in there, uh, but I haven't got there yet. So I got my, uh, I got my little old light here. That's fun. I turned the camera off when I turned it around. So we're halfway in the tube. I'm not backing back up. Uh, so let's take a look here. I'll turn you around and I won't turn you off this time. Okay. All right, so you can see we're crawling down the tube. We've got a little bit of condensation forming at the base of the tube. So we want to kind of get ourselves out of that. Make it a little quicker because this isn't the easiest on the knees. And the animals down here. Well, that's good. Looks creepy with no lights on in here. Power on, I got my EcoFlow Delta 2 power and the, the bunker looks a lot less scary with lights on. Ladder here to get up inside and then shoot out. That's the plan. But first I'm gonna make my cart to see what I'm dealing with and uh, then devise sort of a track system. In order to build my cart to shoot out of my tube, I started off with a red play structure board. I got it when they decommissioned a, a play space back in the day and I didn't know what to do with it until just now. So it's got a little bit of padding on it so it'll be a little bit comfortable. And then I got myself eight casters relatively inexpensively from Princess Auto and uh, they're the linear ones that don't pivot. They just go frontwards and backwards. They don't turn very well. So that's ideal solution for a straight tube. And then I use some cement board screws because I find they're pretty darn strong and I screwed them into the base of the board and then I cut a couple of two by fours in order to give myself give myself some side wheels, keep myself on the track and keeping myself go forward. So once that is all put together, I should be able to build a track and be well on my way. I can start to see how this is gonna work. This is going to slide along my two by four and then the wheels at the bottom are gonna roll on my track just like that. I feel the need to talk about this and you know it may pit the Canadians against the Americans but uh, this is this is what I'm talking about. Can we see that? The difference between a Phillips screw and a Robertson screw. I have injured myself more with Phillips screws than any other screw. Well flatheads are they go without saying but anyways the, the Phillips the Phillips screw with you know the star shape it cams out 
all the time. And I guess that's part of the design of the screw is that it's designed to cam out. Uh, I prefer Robertson's. I think most Canadians prefer Robertson's unless you're drywalling and you want it to cam out once it gets past the drywall or the paper portion of the of the board. But anyways, yeah, I got myself a little bit with the uh, with the Phillips screw and all the Europeans are laughing and torques. But anyways, at this stage of the development process, I'm going to test to see if it sails along the track and comes out the other end because if it doesn't work right now I don't want to make it any bigger you can see kind of that works pretty good so if I'm over here and I oh yeah perfect so this is our first test of our track system I figured I would give it a whirl outside of the tunnel because doing any service work inside the tunnel is not going to be fun. So my plan is if I, it's going to be on an incline because I've sloped the tunnel outwards. So it'll be a little bit inclined. This is more of a level spot. So if I give myself kind of like a push or a pull, you can see how smooth it is. Smooth. Look at that. And then I'm at the end of the tunnel. I can just kind of crawl myself out. Or if I get enough speed, I'll just shoot out the end. And depending on how you want to ride the red rocket, you can also do it on your back if you prefer that way. So you just kind of push with your feet and you kind of go down the rail system, slowly going, pushing with your feet, and you can just pop right out of the tunnel just like that. Easy peasy. Stays on the track now. I just need to make one more of these rails and then I can start feeding it into the tunnel. And then we can shoot ourselves right out of the tunnel. That's going to be cool. These aren't certainly aren't ABEC 5s. <laughs> Need some grease on these. Yeah, you're out. indoor service tunnel work. So the idea here is to screw these guys together so they don't come apart. Just like that. And like this. It's gonna look, it's gonna be much easier sliding downhill. built myself a little bit of a ladder in order to get myself off of the red rocket and I'm going to send it down the service tunnel because that's the easiest way to get in it. Incoming! Special delivery! My ladder! That would have been impossible to do without the access tunnel. There's my ladder there. I want to put it like this. Well, I've run into a little bit of a problem because, uh, well, this is my door and it's going to go here. I think that works perfect, but I think actually That's pretty darn good. So those of you guys that don't know what this thing is, this is a, uh, it's a wire spool. It's just a smaller wire spool than the one up on the ceiling. I figure I'll match the decor and it kind of gives it 
um, kind of like hiding in plain sight. And if you came down here from the actual spider hole, you wouldn't actually know there's another exit hole here. That's pretty cool. All right, we got her pretty much figured out. We've got our door on, we've got our ladder on, and it works pretty cool. I've gone down it once on the way up, but primarily this is the emergency exit only. You can probably use it uphill, but it does go downhill a significant amount, so it's kind of a drag to get yourself back up into the hole, and then you're gonna be coming in head first and going down a ladder head first. So ideally, it's not a it's it's not an entrance, it's an exit. Only use it as an exit. And then you can use it as a dumb waiter. Say if you got really big things you want to send in, you send it in through the uh, uphill. Let's go down the maiden voyage. I'm going to give it a whirl. I'm going head first because I feel that's how we should go in there. Wish me luck. I did what I wasn't going to do. Head first. There's a slight learning curve. Maybe this isn't a good idea. Oh, definitely not a good idea. Not a good idea. Going head first. Unless you get going fast enough, you land on the bed. All right, take two of the emergency exit tunnel. We're going to try it with a little bit of speed this time. Let's go. If you wing it, she she comes up. Quick. Might be because it's tight in the rail. If I don't know. She doesn't wobble. All right, my buddy Mark's here. He wants to try the the exit hole, but um, he is slightly taller than I am. You're six two ish. Six two. Um, as a duct guy, I've heard that you've been through some really, really small spaces. What's the smallest space you've been through? I discovered I fit through an eight and a half tall by 14 and a half wide stud space. So this should be like a cakewalk for you. That yeah, should be. But uh, it's 20 feet long. Oh. Yeah, I was younger then too. Oh, okay. Well, you know, give it, give it a whirl. We'll, we we'll watch. All right. Oh yeah, it's tight. <laughs> uh, all right. Not so bad when you're in. <laughs> Woo! Success! There you go. Definitely doable. Nice. Yeah. Well, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed watching me ride the red rocket. Enjoy me on the next one.